From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as God commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel me? Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test God? But the people thirst thir for, the for water, and the people complained again against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and, li and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to God, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. God said to Moses, Go ahead of the people and take some, some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff which w with which you struck at the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so the people may drink. Moses did so in sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Masa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested God, saying, Is God among us or not? When the still speaking voice of God, thanks be to God. Didn't you read that well? Yes. Thanks to all of our children who are leading us in worship today. Would you pray with me? Holy God, we come to you with awe and wonder, aware of the mystery of life, reverent before your love and power. Sharpen our awareness of the sacred. Startle us with the joy of discipleship and strengthen us to accept the cost of following Jesus. We pray in his name. Amen. The children of Israel lived with the myth that has always been part of human nature. They made it through a major crisis, and that would have been enslavement in Egypt. So they thought they would never face any big difficulties again. And after they left Egypt, they sang the doxology more enthusiastically than they ever had. Even those who had never cracked a hymnal joined in the refrain. Thank you, God, the burden is lifted, and there has never been a leader as great as Moses. Let's honor him with a plaque to hang in his living room when he enters the promised land and builds a house, a dream house. Then... There's always a then in life. Then life happened again. They ran out of water. Give us back the plaque, Moses. If you think God called you to lead us, you were mistaking another voice for God's voice. We're going to convene a committee and impeach you. The people of Israel needed to learn once again the lesson that all need to be reminded of from time to time, and that is life is full of detours and exits. Sometimes we detour because the road we are on is closed. Sometimes we exit because it's time for a new stage in our lives. To state it a bit differently, sometimes we come to the end of a chapter in life and we have to determine if we're going to write a new chapter in the same book or whether the end of a chapter marks the end of the book and we need to start a new book. Notice that the reading from Exodus that we have heard says the people of Israel journeyed by stages, by stages. 
Life for each of us is composed of stages, and the stages are always evolving. Life is a process of moving from one stage to another. Minister Paul Duke says that we sometimes think of religion and our relationship with God as being settled, certain, stable, consistent, reliable. But this isn't the religion of the Bible. Life is never settled. It is always in process. From the time we exit our mother's womb to the time we are laid in the tomb, life never settles down. Shortly after we are born, we begin a stage of life. We begin to discover that we are separate from those around us. The infant has no sense of being separate from their parents or the world. The toddler begins to risk, however, walking away from their parents, but they keep looking over their shoulder to make sure that the parent has not disappeared. They begin to have a sense of independence, yet it is a difficult transitional stage. That's why it's very common for toddlers to cry when they're placed in a nursery. They feel that out of sight means that their parent is no longer there. Then there's kindergarten. That can be traumatic for some kids. There's adolescence and the teenage years. These are times that the brain is still developing, so there can be some, shall I say, unusual behavior. <laughs> then there's graduation and off to college and the feeling that we are being thrown to the wolves. There's dealing with the personal budget eventually. There may be marriage and having children, or there may be adoption. The time when the kids move out of the house can be tough for parents, as our words for meditation and reflection reveal. And sometimes it's just as difficult for children. There may be a divorce. There's the time that has for years been called the midlife crisis. Maybe it could more accurately be called the midlife transition because every stage is a crisis of sorts. I suppose that midlife can be a time when we feel the transition more intensely than we do at other stages in our lives. It's the time when we realize the doors are shutting behind us and we can never open them again. It's the time when our options are becoming fewer and fewer. It's the time when we ask, is this all that there is? Or we might ask, is this as good as it gets? Some people do crazy things at this stage as a last ditch effort to give their lives more gusto. Then there may come a time when we have to be a parent to our parents. I entered that stage at one time. Retirement comes also, which is another major transition time. If our identity is wrapped up in our job or our kids, it's hard to see ourselves any other way. Progressive minister Carlisle Marnie, whom I consider a mentor, I've quoted him before, he tells a story about a conversation he had with another minister. Marnie asked the minister this, what are you when you aren't a minister? And the minister responded, by God, I'm always a minister. Reflecting on this, Marty said to himself, and I guess he is, recognized authority figure, busy, able. He had never been anything but a minister since he first put on the role. Marty reflected more on the question that he asked the minister, what are you when you aren't a minister? And Marty indicated that the minister first needed to recognize that he was human before he was a minister. And finally, the minister said, my God. And Marnie said, at this time, it was almost a reverent confession of awe and emptiness. When a person, minister or otherwise, for a moment strips themselves of their roles, they can see how much they have covered over and how much is left. It's a time when we hopefully deal with our persona or remove the mask person who retires may have great difficulty adjusting to no longer being the role that they have had for so long. It can be difficult to see ourselves any other way. Then there's the stage of deciding if we're going to enjoy our senior years. It can be a time of productivity and being invigorated. 
It's also a stage of coming to grips with our mortality. We sometimes wrestle with this because we see more and more of our peers passing away. Each stage, however, offers, offers the opportunity to go deeper and deeper in our relationship with God. In fact, the adjustments to the passing of each stage and the adjustments to the new stages can emerge and give us a new opportunity. I say can emerge because if we don't adjust to a stage, then we can get stuck at that stage and not mature in our faith. But throughout our lives, there are points when our relationship with God can grow into something new and exciting. This isn't always easy because transitioning to a new stage can be painful. Author Joyce Rupp tells of a woman who was given an African violet for a gift. When the plant was given to her, it was in full bloom. Eventually, it stopped blooming and started looking ragged. But when she cut the plant down to its roots and placed it in a dark room for about a month, it put out fresh shoots and formed new blooms. The plant came back to life and was beautiful again. And when the woman told the story, she had cut the plant down to its roots four or so times. And she said that each time her life had gone through another cycle of pruning, it seemed to coincide with the time when she cut back the plant and put it in the dark. She said that the plant was a parable of her life. When we are going through a difficult time, it's like being pruned. This isn't easy but it can be used to deepen our relationship with God and grow in our faith in a particular stage of life, or it can be used to push us to the next stage that we need to move to. God doesn't cause tough things to come into our lives. Sometimes they do because of bad choices we make, and sometimes they do simply because that's the way life is. Regardless, Many times our relationship with God can deepen. Would you agree that the times when you have grown the most have often been the times of difficulty? To be sure, I'd take a little less growth for a little less pain. But we aren't given any choice in the matter. So given the fact that we're going to have difficulties, we might be able to use them to grow. They can be transition points in our lives. Some of the things that can cause transition points are things that we might choose to do. Here are some of them. Leaving home for a job or for college, I've already mentioned that. Graduating from college and looking for a job, perhaps marriage. Having a baby or adopting. The decision for someone to come out of the closet. A divorce, if we are the one who initiates it. Moving to a new community. Buying a new home, a vocational change, going back to college or entering college later in life. Those are some of the things we might choose that can be transition points. Many things that cause transition points, however, are thrust upon us. We don't choose them. Here are some of them. The death of a parent, spouse, or child, a divorce, if it is we are the ones who initiated it or the one initiated by our spouse, I should say. A layoff from a job, bankruptcy, our child coming out of the closet, the birth of a child if we did not choose to have a child, an oops baby, an affair by our spouse, alcoholism of our spouse and their failure to see what they are doing to their family, Each of these things and more can be used to help deepen our relationship with God at a particular stage. Again, God doesn't cause these things to happen, and once again, they can be painful. They can, however, move us to a new stage if we are at the point in our lives when it's time to make a transition to a new stage. This new stage can be a time of deepening our spirituality. These seasons can be a time of renewal. 
the children of Israel could have used their time in the wilderness to deepen their relationship with God. It could have been a time of moving to a new stage as a community of faith. Instead, they became obsessed with how difficult their circumstances were so they were unable to move on to a new stage. Like we do many times, they had developed amnesia. They forgot what God had done in the past and that the same God was with them and would move them into the present. We not only can go through stages individually, but congregations as a whole can, just as the children of Israel did. Think of how churches, including Central, have changed in the last two or three decades or more. I think it is safe to say that most churches aren't as big as they used to be. This can be hard to accept. We may fail to grieve this so we can't move into a new stage. The failure to grieve can prevent us from going forward into a new stage which God is calling us to and directing us to. But grieving the changes can help us move into a different and yes, by the grace of God, an exciting future. It can enable the church to go spiritually deeper. Joyce Rupp has a prayer titled, A Prayer for Going Deeper, that talks about going deeper with God. The prayer is in the singular, but I have adapted it to make it in the plural because we journey together. I share the prayer with you. O oh, divine presence, we do not enter the deeper realm all by ourselves. Always you are there with us as a guide to direct us as a loving companion to embrace and support us, as a wise one to provide both challenges and solace. O oh, divine presence, as we go deeper to discover our roots, wrap us in your love, strengthen us as we face fear and insecurity, surprise us with hidden treasures waiting within us. O oh, divine presence, when we feel shaky and uncertain from seeking and searching, Assure us often that we are always rooted in your love. Remind us often that your love never leaves us, even when we lose the road to our inner home. O oh, divine presence, you desire our wholeness. You would never lead us anywhere that would destroy us. Here are our lives. We place them in your care, and we commit ourselves to going deeper. Amen. Oh,